Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. You know I do haircuts, right? Yeah, I was thinking about that just now. I actually, your, I mean, your hair is usually on point, so. I like yeah. I actually can. It's going for the same style. But Five dollar so haircuts. Actually, Side hustle. I want to uh, I want to curl my hair for the first time in my life. I want to do like like a perm. I want it to be like a fade, like kind of like you have, but imagine the top was curly. But how curly? Kind of like Mahomes, like how <laughs> Mahomes. Like is. Justin Timberlake, almost like yeah, NSYNC. Yeah, not that much. Like Mahomes, like like a little, just kind of like. See, I know what Mahomes looks like, but I I can't picture. His I don't really right know. Now. Like I've only seen Mahomes a couple of times, but that's just what came in my head. It was like something like kind of like curly fade, but I don't know, a little more like. Just Would it a be little shorter bit, than little it is more now? Like, a little less pretty boy, a little more, like, <sighs> rugged. Okay. I don't know. I'm just fucking, I don't know. I wonder, I wonder, I've never had my hair curled. Can you do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely a thing. I, I'm imagine it's probably like a less intense perm, almost. I never did nothing like that. I was just telling the like, I don't even know. The, I, just say, I just want my hair shorter. It's getting hot out. <laughs> That's what I tell him. But it's getting The last colder. girl did a good job, though. I feel like... I can't remember her name. I See, this like was my thing. Out. I actually told this story today. Anyway, my, this was my thing. Is I went in... This is my very last haircut ever. I'm probably 17 years old. Junior year of high school. I walk in. I'm like, hey, I, this is what I want. And then the lady's like, well... Do you want this instead? And I was like, no. This is what I want. Like, oh, yeah. And I laid it down exactly what I wanted. She cut it a lot closer to what she wanted. And I was like, fuck you to any other barber. I'm never going yeah, in again. Me the fuck off, honestly. Oh, sorry. No, you're cool. Yeah, I was like, I'm never doing this again. I'm never going to a barber again. And maybe I'm just that stubborn. I don't know what it was. But I also thought about it. I'm like, if I could teach myself how to cut my own hair, then I'll just save that much money down the line. I mean, that's a haircut. I don't know. Say you go like. How how many times would you even go? Twenty, thirty times in a year? No, I never get my hair cut that much. Well, who knows? But regardless, you're yeah, saving. I mean, you're not you're far off. I think like three week, every three weeks, maybe would be good. That'd be like fifteen, twenty times a year. Okay, so you're still a couple I hundred. Just, I, I still don't get my hair cut that often. I, I let it grow out. There you go. But uh, you want to hear the starting topic? Yeah. I had in mind. I I think you'll have a cool, like an interesting opinion on this because pretty much this is a story. On social anxiety. I never get social anxiety. I don't want to say I never do, but I very, very rarely get social anxiety. But I got it tonight. So oh, really? I ran it. Yeah, I ran into. And the reason why is really interesting. It's really fascinating to me. So I'm working. I'm, I'm a server at Olive Garden, as you know. And I, I'm at work and I just look up and I see one of my friends. And this was like my next door neighbor. I lived next to this girl for like a good year. Over there. And yeah, my old house. And I'm like, yo, what's up? How you doing? And she's like, oh, what's good? I'm like, hey, make sure I don't – make sure I say what's up to you before I get out of here because, like, I was busy at the time I saw her. And then I see her friend that she's with. And her friend that she's with is somebody that grew up near me, so, like, a, a local high school. And I knew who she was because of social media. So I thought this girl was, like, a babe Damn. growing up. I thought this girl was – like super hot and i used to i used to always put her up on this like social media pla- uh, like Wait, pedestal. Do, I, do i know who this is uh, i don't think you would but i i put this girl up like probably i would say since like eighth grade what, over since there? like eighth no, grade i've else. like I followed her know. i've been friends with her on facebook i followed her on instagram and i just have always thought this girl was really hot and honestly she's like She's a decent looking girl, but she's not like the prettiest girl in the world, like to where you should be overly intimidated. And it's funny, man. It's funny because I was nervous to go talk to them because of this girl from almost almost like a, a social media crush that I've had since like eighth grade. And I was nervous to go talk to her because I don't really know her that well. She's more so just this girl that I see on social media and I would kind of I kind of grew up almost drooling over this girl. So have you ever heard like what's that movie? It's like. You put the pussy on a pedestal. Have you have you heard that before? Yeah, I mean I've done that. I, I forgot what movie that was, but dude, that's what I did. Is I, I don't think it's healthy to follow these girls that are. I don't know. Dude. You almost it's make like them like local like, celebrities in your area. Oh yeah. And you follow them. You don't really know who they are, but you're like putting them up on this pedestal just because they look hot on Instagram. 
Yeah, I never done that. I feel I don't feel like I've ever done that. But to just be like to really like a girl a lot like that and kind of like put the pussy on a pedestal. Yeah, I feel like I've definitely done that. Just just generally, but definitely not made her a celebrity. It wasn't like that. It's just like a personal feeling toward like. I don't feel like that as much anymore. I feel like now I'm now I'm getting myself into shit that I do not want to talk about, bro. Okay, fair enough. Damn. Well, I'll say this. I'm about to start giving my perception on how I view women at the time, which, you know, that's the thing. That we, I mean, I mean, I love women. <laughs> oh, they're like my favorite people. There are some but things about women that I just relate on. Right now, so I'm focused. Guys. February 18th, I got my first fight in the UFC prelims in Springfield. Jordan, it's the first time I'm telling you this. I figured my You're foot so work. full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, dude, I really would like to fucking do some kind of like, I don't want to, like, jujitsu is too fucking like, I think jujitsu is probably the best one to like do as just like a beginner's uh, into martial arts. But I feel like I just want to box. I just want to like punch a bag. Like, I feel like my natural athleticism and, like, footwork and shit from soccer, it's, like, like, fuck. Like, I don't, like, I mean, you know, if you're in a street fight and there's two or three people or something, like, even if you know jujitsu, like, black belt, you're still going to get fucking punched. Like, it's going to be hard to, I just wish I had, like, one good punch and run away, like, just to know that, like, I'm trained every week on that and just, it would just feel good. I feel like the, I feel like it would be good for your hands to, like, hit that punching bag and shit like that conditioning but i wouldn't really want to do a lot of sparring dude i really wouldn't want to just go like to some gym and just get my head punched in because i care about my brain you know like but damn dude when i really think like you imagine like you you hitting a 50 yard long ball or like uh like a shot or something that like when that when you hit that perfect contact imagine just kicking somebody in the fucking octagon like kicking them in the head like that mm-hmm. <laughs> i feel like if i connected dude damn yeah, yeah, that would, uh, I don't know what that would feel like. I don't know what that would feel like. like. As a sport, dude, I feel like you could get all those people in the crowd and you're, like, fighting this dude and you guys both train for it and there's an agreement and shit. And, and then you land that kick. Athletic skill set is so superior that, like, you fucking don't have no jiu-jitsu ground game or anything, but your kicking is just so on point from a previous soccer background. That's it. But, I don't know, there's so many things to do in life, bro, and you have to decide sometime, like, what you want to yeah, you can't do everything. It's, it's, I feel like there's a lot of shit. I you can do, do a lot, though. I want to. You can do a lot. Dude. Do you know how to go? You can perceive a lot of things. I took a two week long golf class, so I'm I'm definitely still a fucking beginner. But I don't know. I I, I enjoyed it. Golf's all right. Yeah, I feel like golf would be like the soccer a lot mentally. Like just the, the imagining the club as like my foot. Basically. Yeah, I remember you and I were talking about that. Yeah, I think I'd be good at golf if I. It's almost as if. I mean, obviously the muscle memory is not there, but the understanding of the chip. Yeah. I think we would have an advantage with that playing soccer. That makes sense to me, you know, because we have to get under the ball a certain amount. We yeah, know I what mean, it's, it's like, like to get under versus to get on top of the ball and just, just driving the ball. Yeah. I mean, we don't have the muscle memory of the golf swing, but that can be learned. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the best thing to do would be to go to, like, the, the range – for your first, like, 100 hours, don't even go to the golf course. Just go to the range and just tee off, like, instinctually over and over again until you just figure it out for yourself. Mm-hmm. And then maybe after, like, 50 or 60 hours, like, ask, like, a coach to be, like, like go through, like, the techniques they train, like, you know, children or whatever they're, people are trying to learn how to golf. I can't drive real shit, man. Like, everything in soccer was self-taught pretty much, like, as far as techniques. Uh, I'm a believer in that. Like, I think that's why, like, the Brazilian kids and shit from playing in the street, that's why they have that, like, dribbling like what next level to like beat people because it's just like from playing like fun and like messing around there's no like you know like instruction manual for techniques like there might be for tennis or golf or something like that. i'd agree with that i would agree with that i think most of my skill comes from just playing on my own just fucking around on my own yeah dude that was crazy over the summer like in the house kicking the soccer ball around like, mm-hmm. I've never really seen it. Like, I, I mean, I guess my friends growing up that I played soccer. We, you and I would get after. Yeah. We would train just right upstairs, just in the living room. And we would be drenched in sweat afterwards. Just so very technical. Oh, very technical, just with bare feet even. Yeah. I don't even think we were wearing soccer shoes. We're, I, I Actually, I did a few times. I wear socks a lot. I like the feeling of socks. I don't really like the feeling of barefoot with the ball. I like the feeling of socks. Though. You get that small-sided, very technical side of the game. Yeah, I like very sock. similar I like to futsal. Sock, like the sock is like, 
like the feeling of your skin on it and like your toenails hitting the ball and shit sometimes it's like i don't know i like the, like the sock. feeling of like a sock just a, just enough protection that like it's one like surface and you get that clean like cushion a little bit dude it's like i'd agree i'd agree and you get more grip if you're trying to like curl it just not on the hardwood on the hardwood it sucked yeah it's slippery carpet turf it's cool Unless of the turf's too hot Damn, dude, this, is, this makes me want to play soccer, honestly. like. But it was cool, though. We, it was really too. cool this summer. Like, we would just get after it. We would, like, train hard, and I feel like I technically was able to, you know, just turn and hit. It's almost like that Borussia Dortmund, you know, that training facility they have where yeah. they, they – okay, pretty much anybody who's listening that has uh, – I don't know the name of it, but yeah, pretty much like anybody that. who's not listening or who's listening and doesn't know what it is is there's this training facility at Borussia Dortmund – and they basically, I don't know how, but they get these balls almost catapulted to them. And There's then like machines in an enclosed area, and then the machine shoots the ball at you, and then another like area lights up where you just fucking pass. Like a goal, ball. like a small goal. Like there's like probably like five or like or I don't know, maybe like there's like a, a lower one and a higher one on each wall, like probably like three or four goals, right? Something like that, yeah. So then it's like boom, you receive the ball in this area, and then that lights up, and you have to fucking. And, and maybe you have to receive that's it. That's like the perfect activity to train soccer. That's a fantastic activity, yeah. Like, and like that's what you and I did yeah. over the summer is work on those very quick turns, just turning and hitting. Yeah, that, that's even better, though, that machine, because like, oh, 100%. it's unpredictable the whole time. So you're like, you don't know where the next one's coming from. Like, so so if like this one lit up, it'd be like, okay, you turn like 15, 15 degrees. Because something a lot of people don't understand about soccer is a lot of, a lot of technique comes from getting your – your hips around the ball so that you can strike it properly. And if you can't get your hips around the ball, then you gotta you gotta be able to make do with however you're gonna do it. And you might have to kick it differently if you can't get your feet around it, or if it's uh, or if you're trying to set yourself up with an outside of the foot so you can curl it this way in. I'm a big fan of outside the foot. I think it's more like it makes sense functionally. Like when you're dribbling, you think you're like you know when you're sprint dribbling, you're supposed to be using like the outside of your toe, kind of bent toe. Uh-huh. So if you're like immediately go into a pass outside the foot is like the exact same like foot positioning with the ball, you know, to where you don't have to you don't have to open up to use the inside of your foot after you've been dri- like sprint dribbling. Like Do you see that ball from like D Maria on his left foot? He took like three dribbles. And then he sends it, uh, like, he sends a through pass to Mbappe, and it has so much curl on it. Dude, it is like a perfect pass. And then really? Mbappe's in on a breakaway. And he just out sprints the defender, like, no chance. I haven't seen it, but. No, oh, it's fan. It's I haven't beautiful. heard about him in a while, but he was a good player for Real Madrid and El Di Maria. I've seen him live. I've seen him live He's twice, so actually. Crazy. I saw. Uh, Real Madrid played Inter Milan uh, in St. Louis, and then uh, who was the other team? Uh, Argentina played Bosnia, but Messi didn't play. But I got to see Aguero and Di Maria, which was absolutely fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, Aguero. I was a big fan of Aguero back in the day too. He was a beast on like FIFA. Like even though he was only rated like eighty two, I could tear shit up with him somehow. I, don't I think know. he's in eighty eight and fifteen. I was just playing this earlier. Yeah, I'm talking when he was on Atletico Madrid still. Oh, like, but he was so, like that was a good generation of FIFA that year, and like he was so good on that game. What year would that be? And then he ended up being like a sick ass player. Like, it was kind of cool. Uh, I don't know, like ten or twelve, something like that. Oh wow, FIFA twelve maybe. <laughs> back when, back when that was like the most important thing in my life. I remember. Th- I think 2010 was the first year that you could actually do like 360 mobility. Because before it was like you could go left all the way right, like a right angle, or you could go like forty five degrees, or maybe like half of forty five degrees. It's so like twenty two point five or straight. Yeah. You know, it was it was like very very much so like this way, this way, this way, this way, or this way, or cut all the way back like a Cruyff. Yeah. Once they add the skill moves in, that's like. I still don't do skill moves, but I fucking always do skill moves. <laughs> they work with the right players. Even if they, they don't work. work, it's like fun to just like do like you know, fake shot is like the most useful one in the game. Now. Right, fake shot over and over again. 
open up, fake shot, even though, like, you're not even, you know, and just cut back. It's <laughs> some people get really saucy with those. Really saucy. Okay. You see some, like, videos online of people just messing other people up in FIFA. I kind of wish I would focus harder on it when I was, like, I'd probably be playing esports right now. Ah, fuck it. It's a flawed game, <laughs> man. It's a flawed game, and it's frustrating. It's also frustrating whenever things don't happen in that game that you can do in real life. Like, yeah. as, a, as a somewhat skilled soccer player, it's frustrating sometimes whenever you can't execute the details that you would be able to in real life without even thinking about it. Yeah, I know what you mean. What were we talking about the other night? We had a really good conversation at the bar, and I, I forgot what the topic was. Talk we talked about a lot of shit. We talked about uh, your cell phone, like your uh, how like you know programming, like just seeing like a contact list when you're like looking for a specific contact and you're seeing all these other people on your list. No, 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 no. And then like somehow like subconsciously you're creating like a negative association toward those those names. Yeah, yeah, I do it. I feel it at least, at least, and then I'm like, damn, like, no, I wasn't looking for Jordan's number, but like, you were looking when for I was Kevin. saying that, no, like, it was like, it was like, you know, like, <laughs> it's funny that I still be like, no, like, Jordan's dope. I stayed at this crib all summer. It was fucking fun. Like, but then it's like, Jesus, there's so much stuff in the day to do to like sit there and like have these philosophical like tangents that distract me from like, that's what happens. Where I'm in class, I lose, I can't focus, dude. It's just like my brain starts thinking about like other shit, like. Um, the body language of other people, like shit, like you know, like there's too much like distractions in there for me to focus on like the lecture. I don't know. I get that. I don't think it's a bad thing either. I think it's just like creative, like mind. I feel like I used to be better at just sitting there and doing what I was told. That, like, I don't even wasn't know as if creative I, as I am. I don't even know if I spend five percent of the class paying attention. <laughs> oh, there's easily days where I did not pay five percent. Like I was there the whole time. And I could not remember a single sentence of what the teacher said. Yeah, right. Like I was making my to-do list, or I was thinking about this dying piece sitting next to me, like to, you know, how I'm gonna ask her out. My attendance has been way better this semester, though. Uh, you know, I pick like I swear I'm sitting like. <laughs> have you ever been in a big college lecture hall? Yeah, like, I have. Let's those. say like yeah, fifty yeah. plus. Oh yeah, and, and that's then, how all my classes are this semester, ex- and then, except the economics one. Dude, look up. And just look how many people are on their laptops or, like, distracted. It's, like, it's ridiculous, man. It's probably one-fifth of the class not even paying attention. Maybe 10% of the class. Yeah, I feel like my chemistry class is pretty good. Like, there isn't that many people fucking around on their devices. But I guess it depends on the, the class. The teacher's kind of strict, but he's cool. Uh, he, he, he always shows up and, like, has he, he runs a good lecture. It's, a, it's in glass. Do you have any classes in glass? Yeah, it's all my classes are. Glass, isn't it? It's a pretty nice building, especially those like s- those w- smaller rooms upstairs. There's like twenty, thirty, forty seaters. Like yeah, those are interesting. They're like nice rooms though. Like they look like some like old school shit. Like they're super clean and it's like empty a lot of times. I go up there and study up there. Oh nice. Sometimes <laughs> I study. Yeah, I, I was walking through campus the other day, and I think it's almost like a superpower to be able to just look to. Go to a place that you've been a million times and then take yourself back to the first time you ever saw it. You know, and just, like, really look up. Like, I mean, a good example is campus. Like, just look up and, like, oh, my God, that building is so tall. It's probably That's different for fortress, you. fortress, man. That is insane. Because I remember, I remember vividly my first time coming to Missouri State. And I was like, this place is insane. If I came here, I would play soccer all the time. <laughs> look what happened. And, um... I remember way back when, bro. That's yeah, so I was just like, this place is huge. Like, just looking up around, looking at all the buildings, the architecture, and just I being think blown away. Campus. I like Missouri State's campus. It's, it's probably pretty, different for you, though, because, like, you, I grew up around here, so, like, I was used to playing. I had soccer practice sometimes at, like, Placer and shit. And that's a good point. But, like, I don't know. You probably haven't really been to Springfield that much. It's weird how, like, your bubble, like, I don't know. When I lived at East Cherry and I didn't have a car, the bubble of, like, what was in my mind of where I went every day was pretty much, like... Within half a mile, Like, a fucking really small area. And you're like, damn, but, like, in your... You know, like, I told my friend this. This is kind of interesting. Like, if you imagine, uh, 
Imagine you had like ten billion dollars in the bank and like you had a private plane. Like your mental map of like, you know, you think Olive Garden is that way, you know, you think uh, uh what else is that way? You know what I mean? But like if you had a private plane and you were on that level of where like, okay, today we're in Japan, tomorrow we're in fucking Washington, the next day we're in LA, the next day we're in Mexico. Like mentally of where you could go like at the drop of a hat would be like that way isn't like uh <laughs> I don't know Willard that's like fucking you know Cali's right there Los Angeles is right there you know like in your mental like mind of your directions like instead of looking down the highway like south to Springfield and seeing like Branson you're seeing like Argentina you know like yeah, yeah, like, yeah. with your private plane and that money that like within like a few hours like Argentina is just like a neighbor to Rio or some shit like in your when you're on like ball on that level. No, I get what you're level, saying. Like, yeah, like versus like you could be reduced down to like where I was in Spring that East Cherry. It was like literally like a walk back in like this little area. Well, I mean you could be happy either way, but like it's or just, even just to have the money to afford a like you know where two hundred dollars isn't shit and you could get to I don't know New York in two and a half hours. I think it is from here. What on a plane? Yeah, probably. That's about. I think it's like two hours twenty minutes from San Luis. Yeah, dude, you pull up to this private section of the Springfield Airport, you know? Have you seen that? No. Nah. Like, the original airport is what now the private, like, the private. So, if you have, like, private plane, you don't That's a there. whole world that, That's, you no. know, that we just have no I idea I knew about. somebody in Springfield That's that had a uh, private plane there, and <laughs> he said the first time that his daughter went on a commercial flight, they had to fly commercial for some reason. She's like, Dad, why are all these people on our plane? <laughs> like for real that's what, like you know that's not some shit you could make up cause like like that's really what this kid was thinking like she's used to like who the fuck are these people on our plane uh huh <laughs> it's so crazy I'm gonna blow my nose real quick I'm been pretty stuffy lately man it's okay I feel like my I feel like my voice is so like vocal fry I don't know what to do Yeah, I don't know what it is. I've just been stuffy. Been stuffy, stuffy, stuffy. But yeah, man, uh, going back on the martial arts topic, I, I would I would recommend diving into all of them and just trying them. I would definitely just box. I would probably just fucking honestly just get a uh, like some basic boxing equipment and get a nice thing to like punching bag at home, and I would just start with like 20 minutes. 20 minutes is a long time. Probably like five minutes a day. Five minutes continuous just punching on the thing at like 80% and build up to like 20, 30, 40 minutes. Uh-huh. And then once I just had like a year of like repetitions of punching this bag over and over. I wouldn't do it on your own. That's just my advice. I would, I would, <laughs> I would get some guidance first and really pay attention to what they're saying. Yeah. I and then learn that. how to throw a punch. Learn all the different punches. And don't you feel like there's part of you that's the like footwork, especially? I feel and like some, it's instinctual. Some drills. Don't you think though? No, I don't think it is at all. I think it's definitely instinctual, bro. Like if you ever like, I mean, I don't know. Like there's definitely techniques and shit, but like I feel like there's like a natural athletic ability to like everything. Like you know, like you, well, you yeah, find yeah, people yeah. who are like athletic at one sport, they tend to be good at just all around like athletics a lot of times. People the athleticism just, is definitely important. But yeah, you're, like to you're like gonna want to learn some technique, especially for sure. The, yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah, it's always smart, like to you know. But yeah, yeah, your athleticism. I mean, you're gonna have cardio I'm over somebody who eats McDonald's every day. You're gonna have that cardio for sure. But also, I'll tell you this: <laughs> work like lifting weights and um, running and playing soccer or whatever it is. It's oh, yeah. very, very different workout than boxing. It's very different. Yeah. Boxing's like full body, and you're standing pretty much in the exact same spot. But it works you, man. It works you like a dog. Like, yeah, I mean, I think within about two, it, like, three minutes, rope, if you're going like, hard, you are going to be exhausted. Yeah. Jumping rope is probably the most comparable, which is why jumping yeah. rope is so common in boxing. Yeah, I think the jump rope, Brett Favre's number one uh, training modality, apparently, that he recommends to anyone is the jump rope. He said that was his, th- through his whole career. He played until he was old and was a beast. It makes sense, dude. It's like, just like, just that bounce, just to have that, like, train that bounce. That's what they tell a lot of NFL quarterbacks. It's ballet and jumping rope are, like, the two counterintuitive things, which makes sense to be light on your feet and whatnot. 
But you yeah. never guess that, you know, you never guess the football I don't know. player I doing like, ballet. I feel like it's not surprising at all. I feel like the things like when I was a kid playing soccer, like I would have been like dancing, or <laughs> gay or something. I don't know. Like I don't know. But now I fucking love dancing, dude. Like I realize, like damn, dude, like I can dance like a motherfucker. Like you know, that's footwork from soccer or whatever. But like. That, that kind I think of I enjoyed what being shitty thing? at dancing and just not caring. You know, just know everybody look is looking at you and you're just like, you're just getting after it. And you're like, yeah, I don't give a shit. I don't <laughs> give, I don't care what you guys are saying. What was the other one? Dancing? What was the other? Or ballet? And what was the ballet other one? and jumping rope? Oh yeah, for that's, sure. That's for like sure, jumping rope is like a daily like habit. Like, if you want to do that, bro? Do you want to like every day? Are you, will we be here till December thirty first or thirty? Uh, I'll be here till December thirteenth, something like that. Fuck. But dude, I would I would love to look up some some like uh, kind of high interval training. Yeah. With a uh, with jumping rope or something that like has some objective at the end, you know, maybe w- whether it be sprint speed, time, whether it dude, be I think time, like overall endurance of jumping rope. Whatever it may be, just to like, be able to jump rope for a while at like a quick pace, because you start getting tired somewhere around. At least me personally, I start getting really tired around two minutes, three minutes. But it, it kills, man. It really does. It works you out. But that's what I'm saying. I'm like instead of doing like the or quads or fucking damn, calves, dude, I feel like I'm getting some good. I'm trying to get some cows, man. I'm trying to get some cows. Let me prop these bad boys up on the table. I'm trying to. How much do you weigh right now? Like pump those bad boys up. Something like that. Hey, I, I, I switch between 190 more. and 200 pretty frequently. So I've come up that. with some like ideas for dieting, bro. Just try to simplify my life because I feel like every day I'm wasting so much time thinking about what I'm gonna eat. I'm like to wants to be like vegan because I feel like ethically, like Space Jungle is a vegan for like two years, and, like no meat, and I feel like he functions mentally and emotionally like as well as anyone I've ever met. So he's proved to me that like you could be, and he still looks like he's pretty like athletic. So it's like, and ethically, it's like damn, I don't really want to support factory farming and I don't have the ability to, like, go hunt my own meat really necessarily. Like, even though it wouldn't be that hard to get that, but, like, to mm-hmm. get a license and shit. But, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, you know? As long as you're getting some good protein intake. I don't have too much opinion on vegans, but... But then it's, like, I also feel like, you know, uh, yeah, I'm definitely not, like, a 100... Like, I don't feel like the judgment on eating meat is, like... For one, it's, like, the system is so much this way that, like... I don't know. I feel like I'm a person that if I was, like, in a position of, like, wealth and power, I would fucking do something, like, actively to change the system, like, in a big way. But if I power myself with, like, chicken from time to time to get there, like, I feel like, fuck, like, just because I don't eat chicken doesn't mean, like, the system's going to change. And, like, so why should all that, like, special protein go to people who are, like, fucking unconsciously going through life and they're not at all, like, they don't even, like, at least when I'm eating it, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of fucked that it's this way, but, like, if it powers me and, like, gives me the energy to do my thing and then I can, like, get rich and then I can actually, like, solve the problem. I can, like, solve it in a big way. It's like, fuck it. So we got be. these moral dilemmas, bro. Like, I feel like when I'm high, especially, like... Do you think it's something more of, like, supply and demand? Like, that's what the market demands? Nah, dude. I think it's so much to do with how you were raised as a kid. If you grow up in your house, it's normal to drink, like, fucking juice with every meal, like, sugary juice and, like... Uh, I don't know, like, uh, cinnamon toast crunch cereal every day, and, like, that's just, like, processed carbs. And well, I grew up with a lot more sugar intake. Like, like, my actual childhood, I had a lot of sugar intake. I a did, A lot too. of sugar intake, but somewhere around early high school, I was like, yo, I need to start focusing on my diet a little bit more. Because, honestly, my mom's kind of feeding me shit. I don't know, she did a decent job, but, like, she, she definitely... She just didn't really probably know either, bro. Like, I mean... My parents are a lot more – my dad's somewhat educated, so he'd kind of be the birdie in my ear that made me get interested <laughs> in it and and kind of bettering myself and dieting and focusing – like, you know, being more conscious of what I'm putting into my body. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. My kids are if, – if I have kids, my kids are not eating the typical American diet. That's for sure. There's no telling what it would be like in a few years anyway. It changes so much, bro, like – like I I don't I, st- I honestly feel like it's one of the most tricky aspects of fitness because uh, for one the the number one thing people neglect about like nutrition the most is they just think it's about the food the actual like food whether it's like chicken or grapes or bananas or fucking uh, you know beef jerky but like 
there's such an, a component of meal timing and frequency and portions and exercise that go so much in like that are a factor of your diet that it's like if you only eat one time per day and your body wants to eat like chicken nuggets from mcdonald's and you eat that like trust me it's gonna find a way to turn whatever the fuck is in that mcdonald's into like what it needs like to a to an extent you know like but like if you're you know like snacking all day and your metabolism's fucked and you don't do any exercise and you're sedentary and like you're overweight and you don't sleep good and you're stressed and you hate your life then like could have a perfect diet or what like whatever you think's a perfect diet and it's like it's not really gonna fucking do nothing but it it, it always cracks me up like actually I, I i take this back because i really do want like i feel like what i'm gonna end up doing in life is probably just trying to like i've been doing this sometimes like i'll meet like a stranger and they'll ask me like what i do like the chick who cut my hair they'll ask me what i do and i hate i just hate answering that question like it's just like the same you know sometimes Bitch, i do me i'll kind of like make <laughs> shit not make shit up but like i'll just like drake <laughs> is that what he said? He's like, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm doing me. And then there's that meme where he's, like, fucking himself. <laughs> really? Yeah. Where he's in the line or up to do? Honestly, bro. I think Drake was nominated the uh, artist of the decade. He probably deserves it, I think. Pretty consistent. I think him, Kanye. Did you listen to that new Kanye album? The... the no, I haven't. Jesus, what is it? Some Jesus is. I don't know. I know it's gospel related. I I don't know. I don't know. I would say him and Connie are the only two I can think of that are on that level. I think there there are some other contenders that come to mind, but I don't think they're anywhere near him. I think Post Malone's gonna be up there in a few years. I think Post Malone's well on his way to become one of the greatest artists of our generation. It's not that crazy of a claim. I agree with you. I think he's, he's really good artist. extremely talented lyrically. Not the greatest. There's definitely a lot better artists out there, but Post Malone, he's got talent, man. He knows how to win over a crowd, and he knows how to sell to the general public, that's for sure. He knows how to make a catchy beat, a catchy yeah. tune that gets stuck in your head, but it's not, it's not, it's it's almost like kind of what pop music does, but it actually sounds good. It doesn't get annoying. I know what you mean. It's kind of like for everyone to listen to, but it's not like some stupid song. Like, it's like similar to rap, but it's not rap. Yeah. It's it's really unique. It's really unique. He really he's tapped into something. Yeah, I like it. I wouldn't get my face tatted up like that, but dude, Post Malone is almost so ugly that he's fucking gorgeous. Yeah, I I I feel like he's really authentic. Like he's a funny guy. Even when he used to do interviews and he was drinking like those Bud Light cans <sighs> in him and smoking cigarettes and shit, like he wasn't really like front like putting on a style. He was just being himself. Like yeah, yeah. I kind of like that, but I just wouldn't personally. I would like it's not exactly the look I would take, but yeah, I like a lot of his music. Like he's almost so ugly that he's actually like a good looking guy. That you're like you're like it's a it's a good looking guy. That's a good looking guy. Yeah, it's like the. Yeah, it must suck to be like, you know, I'm happy I'm not a female because don't you feel like that a little bit now? Like you're starting to get a little bit, you're not that, I mean, I'm, I'm a few years older than you, but to realize like, damn, dude, when I vision myself at like 45, dude, like I'm still probably going to look pretty like much the same. I'll probably look even better than I do right now. More money, like probably better shape, like better personality, better like skill set. Where it's like the trajectory of men's like peak and you know sexual attractiveness or like power or whatever you know, it's just different. And I feel lucky for that now. I feel like I'm not like, like Jacquees has that line, twenty one with no kids, and like I'm about to rain on it. You know, like I'm like, damn, dude, I'm happy that like okay, I'm a little bit. Oh, I feel like twenty five, but I feel like the window of like opportunity. Like, damn, dude, I'm gonna be forty five. I'm still gonna be able to run like fucking I do now and shit like that. People at 45 and 50 that, like, take care of their health and, like, are ambitious, they're, like, still lit as fuck. Like, I might be 50 with like, some 20-year-old girl. I don't know. Why not? I'm still going to be more energized than her when she's, tw you know, like, don't you feel like that, kind of? Like, you don't see I don't your, I don't see myself slowing down at, like, 30 or some shit. Like, but for women, like, it's kind of shitty in certain ways because if they want to have kids, it's like, you know, they have, like, a different biological, like, clock. I feel like that's kind of shitty, like. Or not shitty, it's just the way it is, but, like, I'm great. I'm kind of happy that, like, damn. Like, I've thought about that as well. It's, like, the sexual market value as a male. I have more time to, like, explore. You, yeah. you almost get more attractive to females, like, in a different way. But, yeah, yeah, I agree. I feel like our peak is somewhere around 40, maybe. Yeah. And then I feel like for women, it's somewhere around, like, 25. 
even earlier maybe like yeah. as far as like sex like to to be like married and sh- like you know like i don't know like at your peak like when you were the most fertile and shit probably earlier than 25 i bet well i think i, I think like peak 21. fertility somewhere around like late 20s like 28 or something like that but it overall uh, i bet it's a, it's gotta be earlier than that i, I don't know i well um for females it's about 28 but uh, Damn. but anyway going back to the <clears throat> just as a dude like you you get yeah, yeah, you get a lot more attractive in the eyes of like how the other gender perceives you, but for women, it's like you said, it's probably I don't know, I don't, I don't know where their peak would be, but it'd probably be between like tw- what would you say, like twenty one, yeah, twenty five, something like that. Earlier, just like by the biology way earlier, maybe not, not like definitely not in like, like spirit. Yeah, good like, point. Like, there's like fourteen, forty, 14. fifty year old women that are like, beautiful <laughs> and like I, I probably sound like I probably sound like I'm trying to say something nice, but it's probably so like. No, I get what you're saying. Like, of course, saying. it's probably like 40, 50. Is not, like, I'm saying that like that's all. I'm just speaking from my heart. But, but uh, Young women are more attractive. Women in their early 20s, like that's, that's You know, what's prime. interesting, though, that's is I'm prime. like, damn, dude, sometimes I feel like, I don't know, like sometimes like a, like a woman who's like older than me like is really sexy in like a different way. And it's interesting because they say like men, you know, testosterone peaks around like 20 or whatever and then starts going down. Women's like peak sexual energy is in their like right before they hit menopause when they're like forty and fifty. Like they get like horny. Oh. They get like hornier as they get older to like that point. What do you think that is? I have no idea. But it's like sometimes I believe it, and honestly, sometimes I feel like the sexual tension between like it could be like it could be like an older woman, and it's just like a better vibe than like you know like you're like ooh like it's like some sexy like older woman who's like smart and I don't know. You just like I I don't know if you fuck with that, but that's just me. Like, no, I've been I have a roommate that has like a theory that he just gets older girls. Like he's he's always been into like the thirty year old moms. He always just he he like go out to the bars. He'll be like, dude, I just brought back this thirty year old mom last time, man. Jordan, I'm telling you, I'm tapping into something. I'm tapping into something. These moms, they like me. I think I'm more mature. I don't know what it is. They want the young buck. <laughs> Such a goofy sure, guy. Man. For sure, that's what it is. I mean, it's nothing wrong with it, bro. You know what I like about it? I used to have, like, I feel like it's kind of shitty, bro, because I feel like now I'm 25. The fantasy that I envisioned was, like, it's kind of getting, like, the re- it's out of the realm of possibility as much. I'm getting, like, I don't know. Like, I wanted to be, like, 20 years old and be dating, like, a 35 or 40-year-old, like, divorcee, like, guy in peace. And I feel like it would be so. Divorce from for a one billionaire. F- from a fucking billionaire. Yeah, maybe. Why not? <laughs> Even better. Like, I like it. Because like for one, I feel like you're like a male the, gold digger. No, 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 no. I'm not thinking. I'm not. I'm not even speaking at the money. I'm just speaking from like, damn, dude. There's definitely been some like older like women that are like 15 years older than me that I was like really like thought were really sexy, and to uh, to feel like just like my. I feel like sometimes I I feel like an old soul in a lot of ways. I feel like dude, I met the 60 year old the other night. <laughs> she was like, like I was genuinely <laughs> attracted to her in a weird way. Like it, I mean, I don't know how old she actually was. She was probably fifty, sixty, but like it was more her like energy, energy, her yeah. energy yeah. that she brought to the table. She was so positive, and you could tell this girl just had life experience. And I get what you're saying. There was something that drew me into that girl, but like it, it wasn't. It was attraction in a charisma way that almost manifested itself like somewhat sexually. But it was more the charisma. It was more the charisma. Yeah, I was like, I vibe with this girl. Like, I, I, I like her energy a lot. It's like the it's like the fully realized woman, like you know, a dying piece who goes through a dying piece at twenty, who has the life experience of an extra twenty years, like still has like. Dude, I was out. I was out. That's at the, the thing bar. is like, if you see somebody who's really hot at like forty or fifty, like that, they have to like they have to be doing some shit to like really be like working at it. Sure. Whereas like you could be like eighteen and just be like super sexy and just lucky and just eat McDonald's and then like by the time you're a lot of girls are like yeah that, your lifestyle man. habits catch up to you and you're not like you just get fat girls get fat and you're like wow she used to be like so hot or something so like you see a woman who's older and she's like in amazing shape like she goes to the gym all the time and shit like you're like damn like she's working at it and like it's paying off not just in the results but like in the character like of like you know somebody who works hard to get something versus somebody who like has it handed to them. Like they're like they might be to get the same thing, but the like the th- like the it's like the bad times in your life make the the good moments. Like I get that. I get that. Know? I've always wondered how the fuck did we get when about this? 
when do you quit getting attracted to like 18 year old girls because i was thinking about it like i've probably been attracted to 18 year old girls since i was 15 you know 14 15 or maybe whenever i started like getting interested in women whenever that age might have been so that i was attracted to 18 year olds and i've been attracted to 18 year olds like honestly sometimes even 17 year olds i'm creepy i know whatever Damn, bro. uh but uh no like i've been attracted to 18 year olds and i just keep getting older i keep getting older i just turned 24 a few weeks ago and like what the like what the fuck is that man like i'm i got six years on them now like when does that ever stop so i was out at the bar the other night i met this dude who worked for like goldman sachs this guy was fucking loaded he bought the entire bar shots and i was Tell just talking this. with this guy yeah, it was, it was actually a big whiskeys. Um, oh, really? Yeah, but I, I was just talking with this dude all night because I was like, I don't remember what I was asking him. But um, but one of the questions I asked him, I'm like, let me ask you this, man. So you're like, I think he was mid-30s or 40, something like that. Do you ever stop getting attracted to 18-year-old girls? And his response was interesting to me. He said, you are still physically attracted to them but the maturity gap is way too much for anything sustainable. That's pretty much the premise of what he was saying. And that makes sense. That makes sense. Cause I mean, I mean, I'm already experiencing it. I probably started experiencing this like two years ago where 18 year old girls, I'm like very attracted to them, but the maturity gap there is just, it's, it's just too much for me now. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. I feel like when you're like 18 or 19, the, uh, like you could be so easily impressed by like a girl and like but then like by the time you know you're dating girls who are younger than you you're like damn this chick is just like she's cool and she's pretty but like she's boring she's like just dumb not always but like dull you could definitely be like 18 and be like smart as fuck and have had a crazy life or life experience or just be like really ambitious like there's definitely 18 year olds that are like really immature and you could be 40 years old and date some 19 year old 20 year old chick who's like and you guys could have, like, an amazing relationship, I bet. I bet it would be fucking awesome. I mean, it, it would just be kind of shitty because you'd be like, damn, it's, you just know you're getting older and, like, eventually, like, that. It's got to be – it's kind of crazy, bro. Like, I feel like I'm more, like, appreciated or more conscious of, like, the – like, you don't get to experience, like, your peak you forever. So, like, you better, like, do what you want to do in the peak times to, like – you know, you don't want to be 50 and be like, I worked all through my fucking 20s and 30s. And didn't, you know, like, worked, wor not like worked on your dream, but just like did whatever sacrifices you thought you had to make. Then you're like 40 and you never fucking like, you never got up and like, you never had that young lust that, you know, you know what I mean? That's shitty, bro. Like, that's it. You can't go back. So I feel like. I don't know if I believe in the concept of a peak, though, because I, I just think there are pros and cons to everything and I, I every age as well. Because it's, it's kind of like the concept of, like, the old man who envies the young man. The old man with money who envies the young man's youth. And then that young man envying the old man yeah. for his money. Because it's, like, it, like we kind of want what we can't have. Which is why whenever people are, like, Post Malone and young and rich, it's, like, yeah, everybody's, like, fuck you. You have it all right now. That's it. It's kind of the dream. That's it. Hard to come by, but <laughs> but I feel like that's where I what I was trying to get at earlier about like being not worried so much that like about my age yet, and just being like, damn, like that dream isn't necessarily over if it hasn't happened by like twenty five or twenty six for a dude. Like I feel like if I'm third, like let's say it takes four more, like you think four years, I still got to work four more fucking years. Like I'll be like thirty about that time. But if I, like, really sacrifice that time and then achieve, like, st the money, like you said, the old man's money at 30 and, like, I feel like I'd still be young enough to enjoy, like, the youth and, like, not feel insecure, like, if I had my girlfriend was 10 years younger than me and she's got friends that are, like, 21 and they're, like, you know, they're younger. Be like, I don't give a fuck. Me at 30 is me way more savage than me at 21 or Dude, me as long as they're over 18, like, that is always the rule for the rest <laughs> of our lives, you know, like, as long as they're over 18. Oh. That's interesting, Legally. though, too, dude. I feel like part of the reason why I, like, feel like I have, like, a lust toward, like, MILFs or whatever is because of exactly that, bro. It's exactly that. The times we live in, it's, like, there's so much uh, creepiness about, like, pedophilia and stuff like that that you don't even want to be, like, you don't even want to have a creepy thought. So you might see a girl who's, like, borderline. Maybe she's 18 or 17 or 19. You don't really fucking know. You don't even want to, like, look at it in any kind of, like, 
lustful way because if you're wrong, then you're like, fuck, does that mean I'm creep? You know, like. I just embrace it. I feel it. like I don't even notice it. But if I'm looking at some dime who's like, I know she's like 35, like some chick I saw walking into Walmart today, it was like, damn, like I don't feel any creepiness really. Because I, just, I don't like, resist I know that attraction, not, yeah. man. I don't resist that attraction. Oh, I, I just, if I look at somebody, I'm sometimes. like, they're hot or they're not. Like, I, I mean, I, I don't see it as like, or they're not. Like, I guess, but I, I you know, I look at somebody, I'm like, yeah, she's pretty fucking cute. That girl's cute. Do I act on it? If I decide to pursue it and I find out she's 17, I'm like, okay, it was nice to meet you. Uh, you have a great day. You're a pretty young lady. Or I don't even know if I'd say that at that point. Because like, then I just feel very uncomfortable with myself as I walked away from that encounter. I get what you're saying, though. I get what you're saying. You know, like, there's no... But, like, you can't help who you're attracted to. Just because the law tells you that 18 is, like, the year. Didn't you say they're trying to, like, lower that, that age? Oh, they are trying to lower it. Over in Europe? Yeah. I'm not sure what it is, so... It's like a range. It has more to do with like consent and laws. Dude, Hitler was into young girls. Hitler was like notoriously into like fifteen year old girls. Yeah, I don't know, dude. It's not I mean I don't know, you can't help who you're attracted to. Like For, I, to I, say I, a I seventeen year old is hot because yes, it might be creepy because legally you can't act on it. And but like to say she's hot is one thing. To like pursue a sixteen year old is a completely different thing. Yeah, but I I agree. I feel creepy like saying that, like like you know if like you see a if you saw a sixteen year old that you genuinely found like really sexy and she maybe this girl looks like she's like in her twenties like she looks like she's twenty, but she's actually sixteen, and somebody showed you a picture, like how and you're like yeah she's fucking hot, and then they're like yeah she's sixteen then you all all of a sudden feel like uncomfortable you know that's exactly what I was that's what I that's what I was saying that's why it's like. You know, you say you can't help, like, who you're attracted to. Like, there's a truth to that. But, like, even when you're going about your day, just what, like, you're consciously making into your desires. Like, do you, like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like when you're focused on girls and then you're not getting any, you can become depressed because you're focusing on, like, this thing that you want that you're not getting. If that, You know, does that make sense? Mm. Where it's, like, you could just kind of take out if you wanted to on some level. Like, you're not, like, like, consciously over time be, like, okay, like, I want to focus on fitness or my job or money or school, but it could also be the same as like I'm not even gonna like, I don't want my attention to be distracted to like girls my age that are just gonna fucking you know you know what I mean, but like you could still notice like a chick who's like ten years older than you and then like I don't know <laughs> this is like a stupid conversation, it's like conscious. No, I get I, I like this. Like I feel like sometimes I see a, like a beautiful girl and I feel hey like tilt that more this way. Sorry, I feel yeah. like this. Ooh. <coughs> <laughs> like my mouth's so dry, like it's the worst vocal fry ever. It's alright. Straight vodka. That's all vodka. I wish it was, <laughs> dude. I feel like I could. Don't you feel like you could go for a drink right now? I feel like I could. You want to go make us one right now? Like alcohol? Yeah, if you want. How, how long have we been talking? Like thirty minutes. Forty. Forty-eight. I'm down to go just chill upstairs if you want, just to have a drink. Yeah, let's just talk for a few more. Well, I feel like I had a thought that I was trying to get at. And I totally. I can't fucking remember. What were we talking about? Uh, we were talking about attraction to different ages. And then you brought up older Oh, men. yeah, it was like like just programming your, like, desires on a daily basis. Where, you know, like, you could be in, like, it's like that funny feeling when you're, like, at the cash register or something, and you see, like, a, let's say it's, like, some dime piece. I'll give you an example today. Perfect. Real-world example. So... I go to Walmart today, and I park, and then right next to me comes in this car, this chick parks, she gets out, I'm like sitting there trying to like, I'm finding like my debit card or whatever, and going through my backpack, and uh, this chick gets out the car, and she starts walking, and she's got like a really cute outfit on, she's like 20 probably, and uh, she's like staring at me through like the window, so we like see her, I'm like, okay, whatever, boom, so I go into Walmart to do my, to fill my prescription. It takes like 20 minutes, so I go back out and sit in the car, and her car's still there. So I'm like, damn, it would have been kind of creepy if I like followed her into Walmart and shit. But like, I'm just sitting here. If she happens to get back before my prescriptions were filled, then like, I should fucking ask her for a number. Like, we made eye contact. She's pretty hot. Why not? So she comes back, and I fucking did. I got her number. Nice. But, nice. Uh, shit. Where, what was I trying to get at with that? But like, uh, you can waste so much time. This is like MGTOW shit. Like, you can waste so much time by, like, every time you're in the presence of, like, some female you're attracted to that, like, you start to entertain the possibility that you're, like, going to fuck her or marry her 
when it when like e- like even if it could happen it's just like you're better off just like keeping your energy to yourself and like not playing like the the little social games sometimes you're so right man and you it's crazy so right. bro it takes i learned that the hard way but yes you are so right like sometimes it happens like you know it's like i think the perception most of the time is that it's always like men seeking women but i feel like you know, like, you could be, like, just going to buy something at Panera or whatever, and, like, the chick's just being, like, way too, like, she's being really, like, flirty or, like, you know, like, she's like, yeah, thank you. You know, like, and you're like, okay. Like, you're being nice, but, like, you're not the one, like, pl- you know, it's like the. She's giving she's giving you the, almost the first move. She's sending you like, the signals. Yeah, and instead of, like, seeing that signal and being like, oh, my gosh, look at this, like, uh. You start like going through the possibilities of like this one percent chance that you're gonna fuck her. And I think that's like if we were to boil it down to like the biology, like signaling what it like in its raw definition, it's like, ooh, like this girl's beautiful and she's giving me signals that like she might be sexually interested into me too and I want like I wanna fuck her so much that you start like throwing everything out the you know what I mean? And you could do that like all day. You hyper like, focus. You could sit in class and be like, Ooh, look at this girl, like look at this look at this look at her ass, like ooh. And like at some point you realize like, damn, Focus it's on to yourself. Just focus, yeah, like, but like, and you have to consciously like program that to be like, okay, well, next time I feel that like lust, I'm just gonna throw it. I'm just gonna let it go. I'm just gonna let it go because I'm focused on money or I'm focused on, like, I just wanna, uh, I wanna f- learn what this chemistry lecture is about. And it's something. hard to differentiate and determine what the distractions are. It's like what's worth pursuing. What's a distraction? I have no idea. That's hard, man. Like that's an actually art. Like kind that of is an art. That's like, like that's for an you art. Personally, actually, might kind of be interesting because, like, like that. I feel like I stopped. Like, I used to go after. Like, feel like I would go after everything. Any chick that I was pretty hot, that I would like, I would just like, I would entertain the possibility. Like, I would be thinking about it instead of thinking about whatever I should be doing, like working or you know, make like improving my life and myself. Instead of like sitting around thinking about like the one, you know, like one percent chance I'm gonna like fuck this random girl I met. And, uh, it's like I got this chick's number. I text her. She didn't text me back. <laughs> I'm not surprised, and I don't give a fuck because really, the the game for me was just to have like the self control to force myself to fucking ask this chick at Walmart for her number. Cause who gives a fuck about rejection? Yeah, yeah. But like, when you say when like, seriously, fuck rejection. Who cares? But anyway. But the sick part is like, yeah. You as far as like selection goes. When you start to, like, take that mentality, you could really set your eyes on, like, something that you actually want instead of thinking that you, like, need sex or you need this or need that. Be like, no, like, I like that one. Or, like, those, or, like, these couple girls, I like, you know, ones that you, like, really into but instead of just, like, the ones you can get right away. I feel like that's where I've, I've changed. Honestly, man, yeah, yeah. Like, this the past only girls year. I'm talking to are girls that are really fucking hot and, like. Respect, man, respect. Yeah, I think I've been pursuing cool what's, easiest. I what's easiest. I feel like I've been pursuing what's easiest, and it's become a numbers game for me. And I've been very <laughs> successful, like surprisingly successful at that over the past year. But that's what the, that's kind of I'm kind of coming t- to terms with not be, uh, quality over quantity, you know. And wh- however you def- you decide to determine quality, you know. That yeah, get, that's when I very say when I say defined. only girls that are hot, I'm not speaking on any. I'm speaking on my own personal like feeling of lust which could be everyone has different everyone's pretty everyone's beautiful to somebody so like that's that's I, i'm just like i feel like people you could sometimes you could end up unless like, you're fat no, i'm just kidding <laughs> I, I, if I'm you're so fat mean, then that, that's some, some job. i'll try to help you lose some weight <laughs> for 100 bucks an hour <laughs> people people are into fat chicks i yeah i'm not personally Don't, i mean i'm not it, either it's bro it's kind of weird it's a thing it's kind of weird <laughs> You know, but like it's kind of <laughs> weird. Now I'm think? gonna look like an asshole. Now this nah. is the bar where I look like. Yeah, an asshole. this is why I didn't want to talk about this because, <laughs> like, what you're saying is true. We're gonna sound so pretentious, but I, I, I don't, I don't care. I feel These like I'm just, nice. We're just speaking our minds, man. Who cares? Yeah, I feel like even most of the time, I'm just actually thinking more about like music or whatever I'm doing. Like, even if it's like you know, I'm not really sitting daydreaming that much about like like romance, drama, bullshit. Like a lot of people are, bro. It's I feel that's like a big waste of a lot of people's energy. Is like. There's something compelling about it, like, oh, like, I was with, uh, she brought her friend, and last time, you know, like, that type of, like, interplay of, like, especially to go along with college, it's, like, for me, it's, like, the ickiest, grossest thing, like, I'm so, I think it's nasty, bro. You know what, I, I, I'm kind of looking forward in my life whenever I do find that right girl so that I can quit pursuing women. 
so that I don't put any any pursuit into women and I'm pursuing my goals at that point because I got I got the girl I need. That's all I need. Yeah. What are your thought what are your thoughts on a hall pass? Just out of curiosity. What's so let's a hall say, pass? Okay, so let's say for example, you're dating a girl <laughs> five years. Things are going great. The first four, things are going fantastic. Things are slowly almost on a decline. You guys aren't talking as much. Maybe not having as much sex for like the last year, and then things just start really going downhill quicker. So like you're you you you're on this uphill, 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 and then one year you sl- slow decline, and then like within like two months you just go like it starts going down real quick. What are your what are your thoughts on talking it through with your wife on being like two months, girlfriend? Two months isn't being, a long enough time to be like saying it's bad yet. Okay, let's just say that things have been In my mind. They're bad enough to where you need to communicate it. Like it's it's worth communicating. What are your thoughts on a hall pass on being like hey? Not after two months. Bro. No, I'm, okay, whatever. Whatever it is. Whatever it is that you have clearly identified as a problem. It's a mutual, and you guys are in mutual agreement that it is a problem. What, that, like, you don't want to fuck her anymore? No, no, not not even that. Just that there's the, the, the spark, the attraction, the lust, the love, whatever you want to say. That's kind of been lost. That's kind of been lost. What are your thoughts on a hall pass, on, like, Maybe we should kind of take some time or, or, or taking a break. I mean, yeah, what do you mean by hall pass? But I'm thinking hall, hall pass, pass is like you can go fuck some other girl. And you can go – f- yeah, they she can yeah, go do whatever I she mean, wants, whatever she wants. You can do whatever you want, whether that be more time in solitude, more time with your buddies, more time to reflect on what's going on, more time apart so you can just kind of – you know, sometimes that time apart is going to build that attraction again and kind of make it feel like the beginning once again. Whatever you want to do, and but it's clearly communicated, clearly communicated the terms that you guys are on, and you take some form of a break. And what are your what are your thoughts more so in the aspect of, uh, to where you give her like a sexual hall pass and she gives you one. Talking about your wife, girl of five years, what whatever it is, you're, you're. you think it's the girl of your dreams. You think this is the girl that you are meant Depends to be with. Depends on the time, bro. If it's and you're only still been convinced like two of that. Years, then, I mean, two years sounds like a long time. Fuck. I don't know, dude. I just don't feel like the if if the goal is to save the relationship, then I don't think the hall pass is really gonna work. It's just gonna change the relationship to become like a permanent hall pass, and then eventually it's like. Why would it, why does it have to be permanent though? Because I feel like if you're at the point where that's what the solution would be to like make the marriage or the relationship work, then like, it's like a one-time thing is just gonna make it even worse as soon as you go back to like you know, like let's say the hall pass lasts one week or a month, and I go to fucking you know like I don't know I go to Bangkok or something and I fuck you know like I don't know hundred girls or something I don't know some ridiculous, me or anyone else. And the chick, you know, she does. She goes and gets gang banged or whatever. I don't know. I guess we're just talking. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I, I, that was too. You were going to yeah. such extreme. Like, well, like I mean, because it what? would be like the, that. That would be the thing, though. It's like, damn, you picture this girl that you say is gonna be your wife, and you're gonna let her go. Like, get, like what's say? What, what, what she tells you? That's what I want to do. Is I want to get gang banged. I believe if you dude, love like, somebody, you really fuck, can't. Dude, I don't know. Dude, Everyone's gonna have their. Th- would you really? She's want- not getting gang banged. Let's oh, be there are definitely Jesus. there are definitely married chicks out there who are fantasizing, and that's what they want to do. Is they're like they've been married like ten years, and they're like, I just want to go like get strapped up, and you know, like you know it, bro. People are weird with their. I don't really have weird fantasies like getting tied up and shit like that. I'm not into. All I'm that not really shit. into that either. I don't that need all bondage. That shit. Yeah, or even weird like you know. She's like, I want to be the center of a nine man bukkake. Yeah, like I mean. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, though. It's like you let her do it one time, bro, and then you go back to your guys' marriage. It's like, how are you? Who knows? Feeling? How are you feeling? Your life? I mean, if you really care about somebody, if you really care about somebody, in theory, shouldn't you be able to let them go? Yeah, maybe let you just have to let, let her them, go. You let might them have to be free. Let, let them find yeah. themselves again. Whatever you think is necessary. Yeah. And sometimes, man, like what I've experienced is whenever you experience a different flavor, a different, a different flavor of women, a different kind of girl. It, it kind of takes you closer to the ones that you really enjoy. It's like, you know what? Maybe this isn't all what it was meant to be. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I think of a hall pass. Yeah, I, I, mean, mean, I don't know. I really, I don't know. I'm, I'm open to the idea of taking that time apart, though, and giving her complete sovereignty, complete freedom over her free time and what she chooses to do. 
however she uses to do that because I, I have that much trust in whoever I had. And I don't yeah, know. I mean, I guess there's and a lot intimacy, of like, I guess you'd say, yeah, it's a good word. And you're like your intimate relationship or your intimate relationships. I feel like I would rather set my life up to actually have one intimate relationship, one girl. That's it. I feel like overall complicate, like, cause the, cause life is a lot more than just like that. Absolutely. You know, like if you get that, that component figured out, like you get a girl who you guys are on the same page and she's progressing in her life and you, you know, like then it takes away so much drama and like wasted time of pursuing relationships and romances and like starting over and starting over. It's like, or having, trying to like have multiple chicks at one time. I feel like in the, in the end, in the end, it's like you're playing a game that's taking your, like, I mean, it definitely probably, it definitely has its benefits, but I don't know, dude. Monogamy's difficult. Jordan Peterson's man. interesting. Monogamy's about this. difficult, yeah. but like, you know, how much think, more difficult would it be if you threw another girl into the situation? Dude, There's I, just I, the I, amount I, of jealousy I, that would go on between those two. Like, I, I'm not saying it's like inevitable, but it's highly probable. Yeah, dude, it's sad. It's sad. The kind of like. The views that I feel like our generation have on a lot of these, like, or the pre- you know, like, that we're, s- like, you know, Jordan Peterson describes, like, the male and female over, like, the majority of human history as, like, working, like, tirelessly together to be able to survive the conditions, you know, mm-hmm. up until, like, 80 years ago when we, like, conquered, you know, our environment and started to have electricity and shit like that. And then we had birth control and, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever else. And now, like, the sexes are, like, at war against each other, and it's, like, it's kind of sad, bro. You think the sexes are at war? I mean, think about it. Like, just the existence of things like MGTOW. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Like, I agree with What's MGTOW? Like, men who go their own ways and shit like that. Like, dudes who just, like, don't, they they stop, you know, no fap would go along with that. Like, dudes who stop masturbating because they want to fucking work out more and they want to get their own money and not be, like, slave to women and the emotional like you know ups and downs you know like that type of shit so MGTOW is like men who go their own way it's like dudes who drop out of like the social game with women because they're disheartened with the way you know like tinder exists and uh birth control and marriage really like all just all the like chaos that goes along with that shit i've never heard of this before internet movement but like yeah but then it's just like the same shit with feminism and whatever. It's just like all of a sudden we're maybe not all of a sudden, but it's like the, there really is a lot of like war between the like sexes. Tension between yeah, the sexes. Yeah, so much tension, and it's like the level that it goes to. You like I see it every day actually in in, in school, and it's kind of sad. But I feel like the world wasn't like you know like I guess maybe it's just a, this is the age, but like, dude, it seems like there's a lot of anger between the the genders at this age. And I don't know if that was like a phase that we're in or. I think Dude, both like, genders I, I have like lost a... faith in the other, honestly. Like really? there's a lot of reason to uh I like I feel like if I was like really being empathetic towards women, I would be like, Yeah, I see a lot of dudes walking around and they're just like fucking just, you know, like I'm not trying to be like I'm not saying this from a place of judgment. But just like they don't embody the characteristics with which I believe like a man should have or should be. You know, like I don't know, like just like timid or hesitant or fat overweight like uh not dress w- like just like i don't know any specific one you could find an exception but just like the overall like people who are just like you know uh like positive mass east coast people like are pretty like fucking you know like they're they talk fast and they're like competent and they walk fast and they're like focused and you know like our generation's missing a lot of that dudes too like you know like uh, Jordan Peterson, Elliot Hulse, whatever, these people that describe, like, a missing generation of, like, dudes who are lost right now are trying to find, like, a path to, to make, like, to figure it out through meditation, through exercise, through bodybuilding. Through, through Jordan Peterson, through yeah, Joe through Rogan. through podcasts, through all that, exactly, and it's working, but it's also, like, those two have changed my fucking life, man, I love those guys. It's kind of, like, like, there's, I could see why there would be a lot of women who are just, like, tired of, like, the dudes that they, like, are supposed to be their potential, like, sexual partner. Not sexual, just, se- but, like, intimate partners. I was reading an and article like, before. No, sorry. It's the same for us, too, where it's, like, honestly, I, I feel like some women just, like, annoy me so much that, like, I don't know. I'm, like, disheartened, dis- disheartened, too, by it. 
not saying that. I definitely see like girls every day that I'm really impressed by. And, like, my work my really big hard annoyance, are, it, so, you, what you were saying earlier with women, my big annoyance is with the how ratios. Dull they are. So m- <laughs> I'm gonna it's sound so, so much. No, there are some girls who are smart as fuck. Oh yeah, absolutely. Some of the smartest people I've ever met in my entire life, like top five. A lot yeah, of it's men and women. women. It's like our generation, a lot of ways, bro. A lot it, of guys are distracted. Very basic. Yeah, distracted people on on distracted by social media, distracted by. Um, Let me finish my point though, not yeah, to be rude. Sorry, yeah, but I, I I just wanna I'm gonna clear this up because uh, otherwise if I just make that statement and then yeah. don't back it up, <laughs> it's gonna sound like oh he's a woman hater. That's probably why but, I started talking just because I was like damn I was cold so I was trying to like. No, I j- just women, generally speaking. I, I, I would say majority of them, like majority of women I've talked to, they bore me. They bore me, and they bore me very quickly. I consider them very dull, very, very um, docile thinkers. Uh, they don't, they don't like not independently thinking about the world. They're they're kind of just following the herd, and I don't know. They're just they're just not independent people, and they they're just dull. They're just dull, and they. I don't know. They're they're exciting for a little bit, but then they get boring within. You know, I mean, give them a month with me, and I, I just I just end up getting bored. I just end up getting bored. Do I still sound like an asshole? Probably. No, I, it sounds better now because I thought you just meant like in general. I, you're talking more like girls that you're trying to like date and really like develop a connection with. Yeah. That end yeah. up not like filling the void. I know what you mean. I thought you just meant. Like, and this is a generalization, yeah, and really this funny. isn't every female. There, there. But I'm saying that this is a common reoccurrence. Of women, like my my complaint with them, and they're good people. Some of them are so sweet. You met Grace, like I probably shouldn't name drop, but but uh, I mean, they're, Bing. she's some of these girls. Bing. <laughs> they were so this girl named Bing. <laughs> <laughs> ding 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 ding. I mean, she can't forget about <laughs> Ding. Oh, what about <laughs> Ding Ding Ding? <laughs> I mean, like they're they're sweet people. Like they're genuinely kind-hearted individuals, but they they are. Um, just they bore me. They bore me, and I don't. I don't get as bored with guys. I I find a w- wide variety of dudes that I really get along with, and I also think I think that might just be because of the gender I am. It's maybe easier for me to relate with dudes. Yeah, I agree. That, so I gotta consider that, but that's just something I've noticed. Is I don't know. I just get I get easily bored with women. I mean, it's funny how your beliefs change over time. Like, uh, over the summer, I probably would have been, like, talking a lot about, like, in favor of the reasons of monogamy. We would have been talking a lot. And I, I might still take the same stance, but I feel like in real practice in life, gosh, monogamy's tough, bro, in a lot of ways. It's got to be hard. I feel like I have the faith in myself. I don't necessarily have the faith in, like, somebody else. I mean, you can have the faith, but then when you get your, when you get your heart broken, then... That's why... I just believe in total like transparency. I wouldn't even be that upset if a girl cheated on me. Like I care about that. Yeah, I feel like I actually. I feel like deep fidelity. down. Yeah. Just like don't, the, if she lied about it, and she covered that shit up for a while. Yeah, the lie would be worse. I agree with you. Because I, I would be, I'd be happy to sit down with her and be like, like I really would not be upset. I know I sound like a psychopath right now, but I've been cheated on. It really fucked me up for a while, and I just kind of came to the conclusion that like, who cares? She's yeah. doing what she wants. It's not like she did that to hurt me. It's like, yeah. why do you feel that way? Why do you feel that you need, you need to fuck somebody else? Like, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. And and then we might come to a conclusion that we should end things, and we might come to a conclusion that we should work on some things. Who knows? But if she's doing that, there's probably a clear underlying relationship because if I choose a girl, she's going to be loyal to me, and I'm going to have trust in that. That's going to be difficult. <laughs> Sounds a lot easier said than done, but... I mean, if if a girl cheated on me and just, it wouldn't be the end of my world. It'd be yeah, let's sit down, that. let's have a completely transparent conversation. Why did you feel the need to act on this impulse? And let's see where the conversation takes us. Let's see where this this takes us. I don't know. And we wouldn't need a fucking therapist. Like I would yeah. be able to do this just me and her. She's a good communicator. We could we could talk this yeah, through. I agree with we could you. talk this thing through, man. I I agree a hundred percent with you. It it also like I feel like that the the sense of like oh my gosh if my girl cheats on me that my life's like fucked 
I think a lot of it's just like the conditioning of like culture, or how we were raised or whatever. 100%. Because then like you realize like w- when you really put it in the context of like okay, what that what th- what happened and then like what your f- your new future looks like of possibilities, it's like in the real realm of it, it's like who gives a fuck. For me it is at least in a lot of ways. It would probably hurt. It depends if I was married and I had kids and that. Like there's different levels to it. And I might just stay with the chick and th- through it. You know, like I, I agree with you. It's not as like it's not as like clear cut. Like, oh my god, like if she did this, then it's a cultural like, automated so many, response. That's like the needy dude who like can't ever get any pussy that like cares that much about like. I mean, that would feel so like violent. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, dude. It's so crazy. I feel dude, like you I, might I, you I, might come back from that experience. Like I've been in a fist fight with one of my best friends. We became better friends after it. You might come out of that experience closer than you have ever been. But if you just automatically reject them and refuse to communicate them and you automatically divorce them and you want nothing to do with them, you 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 kill that possibility of that that relationship really growing into something more cuz there might have been an underlying problem that was seeping underneath the underneath your relationship the entire time. And then it finally manifested itself. She finally acted on that impulse. And you, to you, you might be like, what the fuck? But then you're like, eh, yeah, now that I think about it, yeah. Like, yeah, this is something we probably should have talked about a while ago. But now now it's good we're talking about this. And you work through it and you feel a closer bond than you ever felt, ever. Yeah, I mean, you could have you could be like in a good marriage but having this fear over your shoulder of just like, okay, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. But like, what if, when am I going to lose? When am I, You know, like you start... Sometimes it's easier to be losing and just trying to win because you have no pressure. Then you start winning, and then you start thinking, you know, like, where then the chick fucking, like, she does what you said. She cheats or whatever. But then it's like the monkey's off your back. If, like, you can still find a way to love her, and she's like, I'm sorry I did it once, and then, you know, maybe you guys find a new trust out of it. But the monkey's, like, off the back of, like, this one thing we thought would be the end of us. It happened, and then we're, like, we're still good. And then the pressure's off. It's like now the real dream starts. Yeah. It yeah. could be like, but like it's like a case by case thing always, dude. It's, it's just really another nice. another hurdle in your relationship, and if you really love that girl, you'll work through it. Or at least you'll at least try to. At least try to. It's like it's like Kanye says, man. Like what would piss me off personally, a uh, way more. Yeah, the would lie, be the yeah, deception. Yeah, for sure. Lie and deception me. is the only felony. Yeah, so yeah, don't fuck, fuck no one without, without telling me. It's so true, though. It really is, man. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, dude. The trust is almost like the value in the monogamy has more to do with the trust of like that you hope to have. It's like that feeling of trust with somebody is like the most precious human experience, probably. Try like a tr- genuine that trust of like she somebody. trusted you enough to be straight up with you. No, I'm not saying that's that. I'm s- I mean, maybe that like you know, like if she's gonna yeah, go out but of her I way mean, and tell you I that guess. she that's fucked another yeah. dude. There's something beautiful in that. I know I sound crazy. I right mean, now. I know what you're There's saying. Yeah, it's better than not telling, but it's also like I'm talking more like. I mean, it's it's nice to believe in the idea that two people really could have like a commitment that they like don't break, and that you like, you know, it's the kind of thing that like you can never have because it's always ongoing, dude. Like, like trust only exists like it's like a weird currency, you know. Like, no matter what you've done. It's like a thing that's a now or it's not, you know? Which is crazy as fuck. It's a good point. But I feel like that's like the that's why like maybe it's like a, it's on, maybe like on some space. level it's better to take a leap of faith with uh, you know, somebody you really like and try to make it work with them and have faith that they'll they'll do the same for you. And then if they fuck it up, if you don't fuck it up then you have nothing to worry about. If they fuck it up then you're free to go do something else and you've learned from it and I don't know, I agree with you, it's not the end of the world. I don't if think it's I'm the end of the world, then you have something wrong in your life. Or maybe like, I'm just, maybe I'm just a cuckold. It's not, that's that's what it's called, right? And it's like I, did, dude, I just, dudes I get off. Watch, dudes who watch other <laughs> dudes fuck girls, you like that? <laughs> oh no, no, I'm joking. Like, I'm joking. No, I'm just, I, I'm somebody who gets off to just thinking about that other guy, just imagining him fucking my wife. I get off to it. I love it. That's, that's weird. <laughs> That's wild. That's a thing. That's a wild. That's a thing. That that's got to be some insecurity that you don't think you can satisfy your wife as well as another man could. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't know what else the other like what else you would get off to other than that, like you would have to be getting off to her ses- sexual satisfi- satisfaction that you can't provide for, 
Yeah, or it's just like the naughtiness. Yeah, maybe that too. People like people are weird like that, bro. That's like that's like what I feel like I fight on a daily basis to override in my mental like processes is to not associate like pain with pleasure. I guess if that makes sense. Mm. Like we live in a, a lot. A lot of people I think are like uh, underlying masochists. Like the only way they achieve like peace of mind is just by like extreme effort, pain, like working, uh, working, working, and I feel like there's a, a quality in that, but like it's masochistic in a way. You should be able to be like just calm and grateful in a state of like learning and openness and creativity that makes you like feel good for like reasons. Like pain can feel good for a reason because it's like progress. If you're suffering on your run, then you're getting faster, stronger. Do you think that's a I think a lot response of people to pain? I don't know. I think it is, dude, because, you know, like, when you, when you, st- like, I feel like the mental chatter in my mind now compared to when I was, like, 16 running, like, high school sprints or something, like, my mental place is way, way better now than it was. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I feel like when I'm 35, it'll be better still. Like, we talked about peaking. When I'm 45, it'll probably still be better, but it's, like, like, I've seen it all. I've seen where the, pl- the the creepy thoughts that my brain brings in front of me when I'm struggling and I'm uncomfortable or my, I don't feel like running anymore kind of shit that will like kind of come up with to like fuck with me mm. i've seen it all before or i know or when you you know you never seen you, you like it'll it'll always bring you like new shit but like yeah over time you start to realize how to like keep your mental space sound but i don't know dude, I'm, I'm ranting i think i just haven't slept enough the last couple of days but I'm just talking no no shit. no i like what you're saying i just didn't have anything to respond to it I didn't mean I didn't mean to come off rude. No, no, no. Like you didn't do nothing. I was just like, damn, dude. I was just talking too much. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Because I agree about. with you. You get, you get like less neurotic. You get, you just get different value systems as you get older. I'm sure. I mean, I don't know what it's like beyond college, but I know me a year ago. Like I'm, it's I'm gonna be further now a year ago than I was two years ago. For you, I'm curious where this fucking podcast is gonna go, man. Dude, I don't. It's blown my mind. Like even what I've done so far, it's just. It really has. It's blown my mind. One, the personal growth. That's what blown my mind the most. Like, the amount of shit I've learned from doing this. But also, and, like, the amount of friends i made from doing this. But, um, also just, I've been surprised with how many fucking people I've got on here, man. Like, if you would have told me two years ago that, it's like, yeah, you will, you'll end up getting, like, a hundred, what, I've had, like, 142 people on at this point. That's a lot of people, bro. And a lot of recurring guests, yourself included. Yeah. Yeah, fuck, this is the third time. The fourth, technically. But. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this was probably the best one. Honestly, this is probably my favorite. I wish my voice wasn't so fried just from, like, doing that shit all day. I'm going to take an Instagram video real quick. Just because I want to. I'm going to make a point while we're while we're on air. Coming to you live. From six, we're not gonna tell you the address. <laughs> we're not gonna. T- <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'll start it and then. Now I sound like a controlling I got asshole. you. Just, yeah, I'll, let's keep doing it. Honestly, the coolest part about this podcast, we're in the middle of this podcast right now. But the Coming coolest to you part. Live. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> wait, wait. All right, let, let me finish real quick. Um, I sound so controlling. I hate. I hate that coming out of my mouth. Wait one sec. The coolest part about this podcast, we're in the middle of this podcast, by the way, but the coolest thing about this podcast, at least to me, is it's been like exponential. I feel like the conversation has just been on a gradual rise, and it's just gotten better and better. But tonight, and there's been like more rapport. Would you agree with that? Tonight, yeah, yeah. I feel like we're going on some topics now, but like it, I feel like it started off like a pretty decent conversation, but it, it's gotten like progressively better and better, and I don't know. That's just that's just how I feel. What are we? We're like a probably like an hour and ten. Yeah, hour twenty minutes in now. <laughs> a lot of knowledge. You got anything to a say? A lot of you knowledge. Got anything to say? Coming to you live. Um. Nah, man. Um. Pick a habit in the month of November. I mean, it's, November's already started, but when December comes, pick a habit and do that shit every day for one month. Just one thing, and watch how your life's gonna get better from doing. That's what I'm doing in November, and it's it's paying off. Just masturbate. As much as you possibly can in yeah. the month of November, it, fap. It is. It's fap November, not no fap November. It's, it's. It's you shave your beard Just in November. Just don't and get you, nothing you on fap your beard as much as you can. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> or on your, on your non-facial hair, but yeah, yeah. Cool. So. That was so unnecessarily long, but all right, let's continue this yeah, podcast. Trim the end of that off. I don't want to. The coolest part about this podcast, we're in the middle of this podcast, by the way. The coolest thing about this podcast is Should we, should we wrap this thing up? Yeah, I'm down. Cool. I, I'm down to get a drink. If you want yeah, let's yeah. do it, baby. My mouth's so dry. Dude, thank you for coming on. This is a good time. I'm sorry, dude. I feel like I wasn't at my best today, but it's just because I was working on shit all day and my brain's fried right now. No, you're fine. You're fine. I think it was a good conversation. Yeah. That's how I There's felt last time. Some highlights in there. We both said some cool shit. That's what you gotta do. Just come on here, say cool shit, and then you leave. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> Let's just get that shit like a year from now, bro.